We've now seen how demand curves in output markets emerge from households setting the marginal benefit of consuming goods equal to the marginal cost, where the marginal cost to the household is just the price that they have to pay for the goods that they consume. We've also seen that labor supply curves in input markets emerge from households setting the marginal benefit of working, which is just equal to the wage that they receive, equal to the marginal opportunity cost of the time that it takes to work. And we'll soon see that supply curves in output markets and labor demand curves in input markets will emerge from firms applying that very same decision rule to the decisions that they make. But before we get there, we have to talk a little bit about firm costs. And we'll begin with an example. Suppose that we have a firm that can produce different levels of output where we denote output by X. So they can produce zero units, one unit, two units, and so forth. And we'll distinguish between two types of costs. The first are fixed costs. Fixed costs do not change. They're fixed as the level of output, x, changes. Think about, for example, opening a restaurant. You've just signed a lease agreement for the coming year for the space that the restaurant's going to occupy. Now you're going to owe that lease payment no matter what. So even if you don't ever serve a single meal in that space, you're going to owe that lease. And no matter how busy the restaurant gets, that lease payment is going to be exactly the same. So that would be an example of a fixed cost over the coming year. Then we have variable costs. So a variable cost increases as output x increases. Think, for example, about your labor costs in your restaurant. If you decide not to serve any meals and just, just keep the space closed, you don't have to hire any workers. You'll have zero labor costs. But the more meals you serve, the busier the restaurant gets, the more labor you're going to have to hire, the more cooks and waiters and hostesses and so forth. So as output increases, your labor costs are going to increase. So labor costs are a variable cost for your restaurant. So in these two columns, we've just put down some numbers. In the first column, we put down a fixed cost that this firm faces. And once you know one row for this column, you know all the rows, because fixed costs don't change as output increases. So we've set the fixed cost to 90. Then we have variable costs. And when you produce nothing, the variable cost is zero. You don't have to hire any of those workers. But as you produce more, that variable cost is going up. So once we have those two types of costs, we can derive a number of other columns for the table we're going to generate. And the first we're going to derive is the total cost. That's simple to derive. The total cost is just the sum of the fixed cost and the variable cost. So if you produce nothing, then your total cost is going to be 90. The 90 fixed cost plus the zero variable cost. If you produce one unit, it's going to be 190. For two, it's going to be 270. For three, it's going to be 330. For four, it's going to be 410. For five, it's going to be 510. And for six, it's going to be 540 plus 90, which is 630. Once we have that, we can define what we call the average total cost. We'll denote that by ATC. The average total cost is just equal to the total cost divided by output. That's just the definition of an average. Take your total divided by the number of units and you get the average. So to get the average total cost column, we need, need to divide the total cost by the number of units of output. So for the first row, we'd have to divide 90 by 0, but of course you can't divide by 0, so the average total cost is not defined for 0 units. 
For one unit, we divide 190 by 1, which just gives us 190. For two units, 270 divided by 2 is 135. 330 divided by 3 is 110. 410 divided by 4 is 102.5. 510 divided by 5 is 102. And 630 divided by 6 is 105. So now we have our average total cost column. Next, we'll create a column called average variable costs. And of course, average variable costs are again just an average. The average variable cost is equal to your variable cost divided by output, just a simple average. So now we have to divide the variable cost column by the number of units of output. So first we have zero divided by zero, can't divide by zero, so it's not defined for zero units. For one unit, 100 divided by one is 100. For two units, 180 divided by 2 is 90. 240 divided by 3 is 80. 320 divided by 4 is also 80. 420 divided by 5 is 84. And 540 divided by 6 is um, 90. So now we have our average variable cost column. Then the final column we're going to define is called the marginal cost. The marginal cost is defined as the cost, as the additional cost from producing one more unit. Marshall quantities are always defined in this way. And so if we want to figure out what's the additional cost of producing one more unit, well, for the zeroth unit, there is no cost, so the marginal cost will say it's zero. For the first unit, what was the additional cost I incurred from the first unit as opposed to producing nothing? Well, I can simply take the difference between the total cost of producing one unit and the total cost of producing zero, which would be equal to 100. Or I could look at my variable costs. My variable costs were zero when I produced nothing. They are 100 when I produce one. So my variable costs have gone up by 100. And once we produce the first unit, all the additional costs are in fact variable costs. So it makes sense that we can derive the marginal cost either from the total cost column or the variable cost column. What about the second unit? The second unit, my variable cost increased by 80. Similarly, my total cost increased by 80. So my marginal cost of the second unit is the additional cost I incur from producing that second unit so it's that additional $80. The third unit, I go from 180 to 240. So my additional costs are 60 from producing three rather than two units. And the same holds again in the total cost column. The fourth unit, my variable cost goes from 240 to 320. Well, that's an additional 80. The fifth unit, we go from 320 to 420, that's an additional 100. And the sixth unit, we go from 420 to 540, so that's 120. So now we've defined the marginal cost column for this business.